this particular item that I'm wearing over my shoulder is um, called duku in my language, but it's known as duke, um, as everyone would know. And um, it's basically worn over your your head. Um, and yeah, so basically this, this particular duke um, speaks to my culture, it speaks to who I am, it speaks to what I've been through, it speaks to where I'm going, and it speaks to my life in general. Um, I think this, 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 this duke is something that connects me to my ancestors, it connects me to my family, it has made me the woman I am in terms of values and principles, and it's really just brought up the Ngobili that I am today. Um, so the Tsonga culture, which is my culture, basically speaks to um, African culture, deep African culture, where we speak to our ancestors every day. Um, I don't know if you know our traditional way, but it's normally like mjeka that you put over your whole body, um, shpelani that you dance with, um, and also men have their own traditional way. But that's how we dress, um, you know, and we have these traditional ceremonies every now and then which um, speaks to who we are, speaks to guidance, speaks to, like I said, principles, our principles and values. And how it diversifies into my everyday life is in the sense of this duke particularly. So I was given this duke the day I came home. Um, yeah, and basically what happened was my grandmother gave me this duke and then the, it was also a way of initiating me into the family in the sense that also my ancestors who were no longer around, passed away, um, because we do have living ancestors as well. That's why I'm saying that. So my ancestors who had passed were also introduced to me, or I was introduced to them, rather. And in that way, um, then I was given the duke. And I was basically, from then, taught how to use this duke as an element of guidance, as um, my presence, you know, it, 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 it holds a lot of dignity. And therefore, it was just a way of um, basically teaching me how to live my life through the Duke, which guides me. So from then, um, that's how it sort of, you know, trickled into my life and how I do things. And I was told by my grandmother that it's always going to guide me, that I should have it, that I should respect it. And basically, you know, through the traditions that come with the Duke, that's how I was taught to respect myself and to become the woman that I am today. One thing I can say is that not everyone in the family gets the Duke. So I got the Duke because I was the first grandchild which automatically means responsibility, which automatically means that I'm obviously starting a new generation. And that means that I need to now be the bigger sister, the aunt, head of the family one day when um, the current elders are no longer there. So um, I guess then that obviously created that bond with my grandmother because I, no I, I wasn't only her grandchild or her first grandchild, but I was also like, her last born, you know, so she felt like, oh my God, she needed to really make sure that I'm cultured and that I know everything that I need to know um, way before she could pass away. Um, and so that created a big bond between my grandmother and I, and people always used to say that my, my, my grandmother loves me more and whatnot, but it's actually not like that. It's just that there's certain responsibility that comes with my position in life and my, my position in the family, and therefore we, I needed her or she needed me to learn certain things, um, like I said, before she could ever pass away. So I think that's how the bond came about and that's how I was, was integrated into the family, integrated into my positioning, integrated into the responsibility that I have and altogether like indoctrinated with everything that um, I needed to learn. It's filled with a lot of emotions in the sense that um, at some point, you were looking up to other people who had given you the Duke and you were learning from them and they were the ones guiding you and whatnot. And at some point, they're no longer there to guide you and now you need to be the guider. So I'd say more than it is just a process, 
it is very emotional. Um, I can't let my people down. I can't let um, I can't let the next generation down. You also have the responsibility to just do right because you don't want to anger your ancestors in any way possible. So I think the process is is quite deep. Um, it's a lot to take in, but I guess if you're given the responsibility, then all you have to do is do it right and try your best to just keep within the cultural practices that you have been taught. We tend to be taught so many things, but we're not actually told what goes wrong when you actually don't do these things. And I think for me, that's what made me actually so aware of my surroundings, because I was also told that if this goes wrong or if this isn't done this way, then this is a repercussion. You know what I'm saying? So I think a lot of people end up feeling like, okay, these are the cultures, these are the practices, but why should we? You know what I'm saying? What's the reasoning behind it? So I think I would fully instill the importance of the cultural practices um, in the in the next in the next person or in the next generation, um, just to say that you know these cultural practices, these objects, they mean so much to you, and if you don't use them correctly, then there are consequences that come thereafter.